YouTube channel or on One Spot Media. We're also live on Music 99 and on GoJamaica.com. If you have questions on today's subject, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook page at Television Jamaica or Instagram at Television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is on seasick geography. We're going to focus on natural hazards and disasters. And of course, we're going to be focusing on hurricanes. I am Marlon Virtue. Now, let's dive right into today's lesson with a brief introduction of what exactly are natural hazards and natural disasters. But before we get into the meat of the matter, here's a little quiz for you. We're going to go to our objectives for today uh, from the CSEC syllabus. We're going to differentiate what natural hazards, between natural hazards and natural disaster. We're also going to be looking at the characteristics of tropical storms and hurricanes. We will also seek to classify hurricanes based on their intensity using the Saffir Simpson hurricane scale and also determine the potential impacts of hurricanes on the Caribbean region. Now here are some interesting information for you. Here is a fact or a trivia. This is something for you. Now how much energy does the average hurricane generate throughout its lifetime? And we're using the equivalent of nuclear bombs because it's a whole lot of energy. So we have the equivalent of 10 nuclear bombs for A. Is it B, equivalent of 100 nuclear bombs? Or C, 1,000 nuclear bombs? Or D, 10,000 nuclear bombs, that 10,000 times the effective, the force of Hiroshima. I'll give you two seconds. Two, one. If you said D, then you are indeed correct. Now, the average hurricane throughout its lifetime generates enough energy as 10,000 nuclear bombs. Now, that amount of energy is incomprehensible. And that is enough energy to drive the planet, the entire Earth, for years, believe it or not. And we're talking only about one hurricane. And that is, that is just the average hurricane. We don't even go into major hurricanes as yet, category three, category four, category five. Now, in any given day during a hurricane, there is enough energy in one day in a hurricane that's enough to drive the planet for 200 days. That, again, is a huge amount of energy. In other words, a hurricane passing by for two days can drive the planet for more than a year. That's all the energy condensed in one of these monstrosities called hurricanes. So we're going to look exactly what are natural hazards and we're going to differentiate hazard versus a disaster. So we have some categories, all right? Now, natural hazards, they can be uh, geological, they can be hydrometeorological, they can be uh, biological. All of these are varying hazards. Now, these exist naturally in, in nature, all right? Now, we, we, have, we are surrounded by hazards. Everywhere we go, there's another hazard that we can look at. We also, so we're going to start with geological hazards and what these are. So geo, that's a prefix meaning of the earth. So these are hazards directly related to the earth. So these processes can, you know, uh, can come from volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and we know the relationship between earthquakes and tsunamis. When there's an earthquake under the sea, we have the potential for, uh, for, for a disaster, for a tsunami. Now, this is a volcanic eruption. That's a natural hazard. That's the first one. And the next one that we're going to look at is a tsunami. Now, these are, as we said before, geological hazards, okay? So these exist naturally. Next one we're going to look at is hydrometeorological. Now, these are hazards related to hydro, water, the atmosphere, weather-related events. These come as floods, and they also come as droughts. You know, so it can be too much water, and it can also be the lack of water. So all these hazards, they're always there. And we can see that article from 1969 from the Glena. So St. Elizabeth has been having drought problems from long before I was born and before all of you were even born. <laughs> and our last hazard for today is we're going to be looking at biological hazards. Now, these are hazards, of course, uh, associated with living organisms that has the potential to damage other organisms and, of course, 
we are that organism, okay? So we're gonna look at organisms that will affect us. And of course, the first one on our tongues is the coronavirus. And we have Ebola, we have smallpox, hantavirus, HIV, dengue, you know, you can name almost any of those on the tip of our tongues that we could name. Uh, you know, those have the potential to seriously affect uh, us, the human population. So here's an activity for you. We're going to look at a climatic hazard. So which of the following are climatic hazards? Is it A, blizzards, drought, sleet, drizzle, bearing in mind what a hazard is? Is it B, floods, tornadoes, heat waves, tropical cyclones? Is it C, hurricane, hail, drought, tsunamis? Or D, tsunami, hail, frost, and anticyclone? Now, right there, we can rule out D, and we can also rule out C, because they both have tsunamis. And we said climatic hazard. And we also, so now we're left with A and B, right? So we now we have a blizzard, a drought, a sleet. And now the only thing wrong with A is a drizzle. Now a drizzle won't kill you. It'll only make you sick for a few days. But the correct answer right there is B. Floods, tornadoes, heat waves, and tropical cyclones. All of these climatic systems, climatic hazards, they have the potential to cause serious effects. Now, when we look at hazards versus disaster, I'll ask the question, when does a hazard become a disaster? Right? Now, when we have a, a Category 5 hurricane at sea or we have a, a volcanic eruption all the way uh, on some remote island in Hawaii, does it affect people? When we have a Category 5 hurricane all the way from the Cape Verde Islands and it does not make its way to the Eastern Caribbean, it's all the way over the open waters at Category 5, winds of 250 kilometers or more. Is it a hazard or is it a disaster? The correct answer is a hazard. Now, hazards become disasters when they affect human beings, all right? So we have hurricanes, we have all of them out there, but we, human beings, we are the ones who put ourselves a lot of the times in the way of these natural hazards, all right? So let's dive into what a hurricane really is. Hurricanes, known generically as tropical cyclones, these are low pressure systems with organized thunderstorms activity that form over tropical or subtropical waters and they gain all their energy from, of course, the water. Now all of that exchange of heat energy continuously drives that big engine called the hurricane, right? So as we said, it's a low pressure system. So here's how a low pressure system works. When we have warm rising air, because the earth is turning, we have that nice swirling effect where the winds are converging, that warm air rises, and with rising warm air continuously, we have a distinct formation of cumulonimbus clouds, and we also have all of that, that vacuum that is left behind when that warm air rises, so we have that cool air now sinking to take the place of the warm air, and as it sinks and it moves across the surface of the earth, it warms, and then we have it rising again. So we have all of this, this continuous flux of rising and sinking air. That is what drives that big engine that you see spinning, churning to your right. That is called a hurricane with a very well-defined eye. And speaking of the eye, let us look at the structure of what hurricanes really are. They are distinctly three parts. An eye, an eye wall, and rain bands. Now these rain bands can extend for roughly uh, hundreds of tens to hundreds of kilometers from the center of the storm. So let's, let's just dissect a little for you and show you what exactly the, what the, the interior workings of a hurricane, all right? So we have a very nice calm eye on the inside and directly around the eye we have the eye wall which forms a large band of clouds that surrounds the entire system. Now, under those bands of clouds, we have a continuous rising and falling of air, a continuous engine driving the hurricane. This is what is driving it. Warm air, cold air, sinking and exchange. That is the force. All that energy is condensed in that system. That is what keeps the hurricane going, all right? So that is the dissected hurricane for you. Speaking of low pressure systems and high pressure systems, let's show you. Let's, let me ask you this. Which of the following best is the best example of a low pressure system? Is it a cold front? 
an occluded front, a depression, or a drought? I'll give you two seconds. Two, one. If you said D, then you're, you're incorrect. The correct answer is actually C, a depression. Now, we know that all low-pressure systems, hurricanes, tropical storms, they all start out with a depression. So the pressure has to be low to set the precedence for what is to come for a tropical storm going up to a hurricane. So the best example of a low-pressure system right there would be a depression, all right? So I'm going to show you this little video right here, and I'm going to ask you to just pay attention to these questions on your right. What sustains hurricane's energy? What part of the hurricane is the most destructive? What does the Atlantic, when rather, does the Atlantic hurricane season peak? And what do you think are major hurricanes? And also, what accounts for the most fatalities of a hurricane? Take a sneak peek at this. Cyclone, typhoon, hurricane. All of these names are used around the world to describe the most powerful storm known to man. Hurricanes are unpredictable, but scientists have a thorough understanding of how hurricanes form and sustain their power. In the Atlantic Ocean, hurricane season peaks during the late summer months when tropical waters are the warmest. Hurricanes form from a cluster of thunderstorms that suck up the warm, moist air and move it high into Earth's atmosphere. The warm air is then converted into energy that powers the hurricane's circular winds. These winds spin around a low pressure center called the eye, which can provide a 20 to 30 mile radius of eerie calm. Encircling it is the eye wall, a towering ring of clouds with some of the fastest wind speeds of the hurricane. Surrounding the eye wall are curved bands of clouds, the rain bands, often tens of miles wide, releasing sheets of rain and sometimes tornadoes. When a tropical storm's winds reach at least 74 miles per hour, it becomes a hurricane. The hurricane then receives a category ranking of one to five on the Saffir-Simpson scale, based on its wind speed and potential damage. But wind speed isn't always the most dangerous component when hurricanes come near land. It's storm surge. Storm surge is caused when winds from an approaching hurricane push water towards the shoreline up to 20 feet above sea level and can extend 100 miles. 90% of all hurricane deaths are the result of storm surge. While hurricanes can cause mass devastation, just like other natural disasters, they serve a higher purpose within the global ecosystem. Hurricanes help regulate our climate by moving heat energy from the equator to the poles, keeping the Earth's temperature stable. Over time, science has helped us to better understand hurricanes and predict their paths. See all right, now you can see all of what happens during a hurricane formation, etc. Now, let's look briefly at some of these questions, all right? What sustains a hurricane's energy? All of that was the first thing in the video. If you said heat energy, heat energy or warm ocean waters, roughly about 27 to 28 degrees Celsius, that is what sustains the, energy, the, the, the hurricane. There's a constant flow of warm energy, warm air being converted to water, water vapor, and that comes down as rain. Now that is what keeps our hurricane going, the engine of the hurricane. Our next question is, which part of the hurricane is the most destructive? Is it the outer bands? Is it the eye? Or is it the eye wall? The eye wall. The eye wall. That's the most destructive part of the hurricane. It has the most, the strongest winds and they are clustered and concentrated around a low pressure center. So the highest winds are usually in the, just around the eye, in the eye wall. And this is where the hurricane hunters fly and they test the winds right here in the hurricane. And this is what they use to determine what category of hurricane it is. Now the next question, when does the hurricane Atlantic, when does the Atlantic hurricane season peak? 
Of course, for Jamaica, we know it's just about September 12 or September 13. The average is between August and October during the entire, uh, the, uh, the entire Atlantic Ocean. Now, what do you think are major hurricanes? The video actually didn't say, but it, it implied it. Now, major hurricanes are, they, are those above category three, all right? Hurricanes above category three, those are considered major and they have the destructive capacity uh, to destroy and cause extensive damage to buildings, to crops, and also to our livelihoods. And lastly, what accounts for most fatalities during a hurricane? Yes? Did you say, yes, correct, that is right. Storm surge. A storm surge is what accounts for most fatalities during a hurricane. Now, if you, most of us have at home, we have a surge protector on our refrigerators, all right, on our appliances. Now, a surge means an excess. So when we have an excess of electricity, the surge protector takes all that surge and it grounds it. Now, when we have a storm surge, there is a huge, a tremendous amount of, this is, this is like a Donald Trump huge, a huge amount of water being pushed on shore by those winds over 220 kilometers per hour. Now that can move a whole lot of water inland and that water can now move all the way up for several miles and of course taking everything out in its path, okay? So they mentioned the Sapphire Simpson scale earlier. We're gonna look on the intensity of how these storms develop. Now when they start out as a tropical storm, they gradually move uh, as they increase in strength and magnitude we have a category one where the winds are up to just about 119 to 153 kilometers per hour and the storm surge there can be roughly about four to five feet. Now, as we gradually increase the strength of the system up to a category three, when the hurricane becomes a major system, the winds are now up to 209 kilometers per hour. Now, the storm surge here can be up to just about 3.7 meters or 12 feet. Now, picture 12 feet of water traveling the sea, rising an additional 12 feet and moving inland. Now that can travel all the way inland and cause, you know, take out a lot of things in its path. Now category four and category five, these are the other very, very intense major systems, right? Winds exceeding 250 kilometers per hour. And the storm surge here can be more than 18 feet. That's three times my height. Now, we only need about six inches of moving water. That amount will move a motor vehicle. Can you imagine what 18 feet of water can do? And it's moving, all right? Under the influence of winds of about 200 kilometers per hour. That can only be catastrophic and devastating, okay? All right, so we're gonna look at the weather conditions now associated with a hurricane, okay? So as a hurricane approaches, you ever heard of the calm before the storm? That is exactly what happens when a hurricane is approaching. There's an intense period of calm. So as the hurricane approaches, the temperatures and the pressure begins to fall, hence we have the calm. Now the winds are gentle as it approaches and they're coming in from the northwest. The clouds begin to form, light shower develops and the winds now begin to gust, okay? So during the storm, the hurricane is now getting closer. During the storm, the pressure, is, the pressure falls rapidly and the wind speeds increase up to 90 kilometers per hour. It's sustained extensive cloud cover with cumulonimbus clouds and severe showers and thunderstorms. Now at the eye of the storm, there is a period of calm and people tend to misrepresent this thinking that the storm has passed. Now the pressure in here is low and the temperature rises and the sun may appear briefly in the eye of the storm. And I'll give you a little, a little hint for you. I'm going to sing something for you from 1988 during the passage of Hurricane Gilbert, where Love and Dear said, a little after that Gilbert turned back, lick off the roof of a natty jade shock. He said, blows and skirt, I must never know. Say, I and I live right here. So... Water come in my room. All right, that was loving there from 1988, Hurricane Gilbert. A lot of my colleagues will remember that. 
I was just a youngster then, but I remember it like it was yesterday. So when Lovin Dare said, little after that, Gilbert turned back, at that time, people did not exactly understand or understood what happened when, you know, when the eye was passing over. So they thought the storm was over, including myself. I went outside in the, in the sunlight, it was calm. I was doing damage assessment, checking my mango tree, my nisberry tree, checking my goats and my pigs, all of those during the eye of the storm. Now, moments later, the eye, the eye wall came back and now the winds came back from the other direction. Now, so now the winds are coming back from the southeast. Initially, the winds were from the northwest. Now they are from the southeast. So the storm didn't actually turn back. It was just one half of it passed and the other half was now coming. So as the storm passes, hurricane force winds and torrential rain begins. The wind direction is now from the southeast. The temperature drops. Again, the pressure also begins to rise. And when the storm passes, this is now when the hurricane has passed entirely. The storm passes, the pressure and temperatures now rise, rainfall decreases, we have light showers, and it also gradually gets very, very fair weather. Now, why is it always fair after a hurricane? All of that energy that the hurricane is used has been used up and the hurricane has passed. So now we have clear weather usually following the passage of a hurricane, all right? Now, I'm gonna show this little video for you also. I'm going to play it for you, and this is what I want you to do for me. I want you to answer some of these questions to the right of your screen. What is the name of the hurricane? What were some of the effects of these on the physical landscape? What were some of the effects on people? And was this hurricane a disaster or was it a hazard? Okay, take a look. All right, so here we have the Prime Minister of, uh, uh, of uh, Bahamas. Right here, he was making a statement that, of course, the, the country can barely, can barely keep itself up. Um, just observe exactly what is happening. Uh, you can, you know, there's, there's a little script there that you can read. Tens of thousands of homes damaged, well, damaged, I would say, completely decimated, destroyed. Oh, that is actually a picture inside of somebody's house. You can see their Christmas tree right there, still standing there. No roof left, furniture, everything gone. The storm literally parked over the Bahamas. It was, it was moving at one mile per hour. That's like it was parked there, okay, for a while. Now, if we can look at this video, if you can see the images right here, it's an amateur video, of course, somebody's cell phone. But you can see the swell. That is the swell of the storm surge right outside the man's door. The water was up to his door. Now we can see what happened after the storm has passed. You know, we have still have areas inundated with water. We have homes destroyed, people's livelihood destroyed. Um, we have a lot of deaths. I think there were about 85 deaths associated with if you remember, this was in the Bahamas just a few years ago. It was Hurricane Dorian, and it was a Category 5 system when it passed over the Bahamas. So that was Dorian. Some of the effects that we can see on the landscape, we had inundated, lands inundated for days, days on end. We had a marina completely destroyed. We also had um, boats being overturned, so people's livelihoods, housed, houses damaged completely destroyed, decimated. Uh, people are still yet to get back on their feet um, following the passage of Hurricane Dorian some time ago. So we can see the effects. The effects are, they are human effects, they are physical effects, and these can be long-term. People have lost loved ones, and you know there's no way of getting over that, especially following a hurricane. So here are just some things that you need to do. Five things you need to know about hurricane hazards, okay? Storm surges, these cause the most deaths in any hurricane, and that, is the mo that can cause the most damage. Hurricane winds can top 200 or even 250 miles per hour and cause massive damage to buildings in its path. Inland flooding caused by torrential rain can damage roadways, 
well away from the coast. And right here in Jamaica, we have experienced that countless times. I mean, the average Jamaican will experience two or three major hurricanes in his or her lifetime. And so far, I have experienced two, all right? Hurricane Ivan and Hurricane Gilbert. Those are my two major hurricanes. Were, those were above category three, and those completely caused a lot of damage over Jamaica. Cost us a, roughly about 10 or 15% of our GDP. Now, that's another thing when a hurricane passes. Now, when a hurricane passes, the country never normally, you know, as much as we can prepare, but now we're going to have to pump resources in to, uh, to rebuild and revive the economy. People's livelihoods lost, people's lives lost. So we now, we, we now have to channel resources back into these disasters following their passage. So one more thing, hurricanes can spawn tornadoes in some areas. We rarely have those, if any at all, we've had them in Jamaica. But places like North and South Carolina, Florida, they have seen tornadoes associated with hurricanes. And we also have rip currents that can just literally drag you out to sea during the passage of a hurricane because the winds are still very, very much there on the seas. So that will make swimming, of course, and any form of fishing activity absolutely dangerous and you know, non-essential if you have, if, you know, if you may. All right, so now we're going to look at some tips, what to do before, during, and after a hurricane. Now, these things are usually on your, uh, on your CXC long paper where it says, list three things that you should do before or during or after a hurricane. So these are your hurricane precaution measures that you need to take. So you need to safeguard your important documents including an inventory of all your possessions and your you know, insurance policies, etc. Fill up your gas tank, sign up for, you know, make sure you have local alerts and warnings, prepare to evacuate, and while you're preparing to evacuate, make sure you know what your evacuation routes are or is. In Jamaica, we don't really have established evacuation routes, but we do have some of those uh, when the uh, disaster strikes. We have established those from the Disaster Management Authority here in Jamaica. Now, we also have things that you should do during the storm. Follow the advice of the local authorities. Do not go outside for any reason at all. Make sure you have your go bag with your essentials, your, your, uh, your medications, your three-day supply of water, your batteries. Um, so if flooding threatens, make sure you turn off all your electricity and you're always on high ground, okay? When you're in your house, if, you, if, you're, living in a, if you're living in a, in a low-lying or a flood-prone area, make sure you know what exactly to do. And you either evacuate before the storm comes or you go to higher grounds. And of course, after the storm, if you have evacuated, make sure you know you do not return to your area until you are told to do so. Make sure you, have, you, do not, you stay away from falling lines, stay away from debris. Call the police if there are any reports of hazards. Do not walk or drive on any flooded roads, okay? So if you have any questions on what we've done so far, you can send them in on our various platforms, and I will see if I can answer in the final segment. When we come back, we answer your questions, and we wrap up. Stay with us. We'll be back in a few. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. For COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during, and after you prepare food before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.
Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston. <laughs>Welcome back to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE subjects. Today we have been discussing CSEC geography and we've been looking at natural hazards and disasters and we're focusing on, or we focus rather, on hurricanes. So right now, this is our question and answer session. But before we dive right into that, we had sent out a notification for any student who wanted, who, or who wants rather, any form of uh, clarifications on anything that we have discussed so far in today's lesson, you can just put those comments down on the Facebook page uh, on Television Jamaica or also on Instagram page, wherever you can, stick those comments down so we'll know what exactly is troubling you and we can have it clarified in the session, okay? So the lines are open, questions and answers right here. In the interim, until those questions come in, let me recap quickly for you. So. Initially, we had looked at differentiating what exactly were natural hazards and natural disasters, all right? So we do have hydrometeorological disasters, we, uh, hydrometeorological hazards rather, we have geological hazards, we also have biological hazards. Now, these are all hazards that existed or they exist naturally in nature and they become disasters when? So, for recapping, a hazard, a hazard becomes a disaster when it becomes a disaster when, yes, you're correct, hazard becomes a disaster when it affects human lives, all right? So, when a hazard becomes a disaster, when it affects humans or human lives, all right? So that is how you differentiate what a hazard and what is a hazard and what is a disaster. So examine the characteristics of a tropical storms and hurricanes. Now the characteristics, as we said, a hurricane has a very well-defined uh, uh, Outlay, exactly. What exactly does a hurricane or a tropical storm have in common? We have a very distinct eye. That's for a hurricane or even a tropical storm because when it develops a nice area of circulation, it becomes, when it develops what is going to be an eye, not exactly well defined, then it's a tropical storm. So we have a well defined eye. These are the characteristics of hurricanes. We have an eye wall, that's the second thing, and the next thing is, yes, we do have outer rain bands. These outer rain bands extend from the center, just from around the eye, and they can go for tens or maybe even hundreds of miles from the center. Now that is, or those are the characteristics of tropical storms and hurricanes. So now we're gonna classify hurricanes based on the, the Saffir-Simpson hurricane scale, all right? 
So on the Saffir Simpson scale, how many categories are there? Three, four, two, five. Correct. There are five categories on the Saffir Simpson scale. All right, so we have five categories. This is how we classify hurricanes based on their magnitude and on their pressure. So we have hurricane, five categories, all right? Those are category, the category one, of course, is the weakest. And these go now from category one to category five. Now for a category one system, we have winds of roughly about 119 to 153 kilometers per hour. Storm surge roughly about 1.5 meters. And they can, we can see the damage assessment, very dangerous winds and will produce some amount of damage. Now, as we go up to category two, storm surge, roughly about eight feet, extremely dangerous winds and can cause extensive damage. The winds here are up to 177 kilometers per hour. Now, category three is when we get into our major systems. We start having devastation. Winds will be more than 209 kilometers per hour. And of course, the storm surge here can be 12 feet. Going up to category four and five, we do have an intensity uh, of winds and pressure. Storm surge getting up to 18 or greater than 18 feet, 26 feet in some places, even 30 feet we have seen during Hurricane Dorian and also during Hurricane Katrina that completely decimated New Orleans some years ago. And of course, the damage here will be and can be catastrophic, okay? So when you hear of a category three system, the first thing that comes to mind is, yes, it is a major hurricane and it has the potential to cause extreme damage. All right? So we're going to look at some things you need to know about what exactly you need to know about hurricane hazards. Um, we, we know that the most, the most common threat during a hurricane is what? Say it again. Yes, 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 you're correct. Storm surge. Storm surge is what causes the most damage during a hurricane, okay? So we do have extremely strong winds, but of course, the storm surge is what it takes to move those buildings out of the way, move the cars out of the way, move the boats and move, you know, take your boat from the sea and park it in your garage. Storm surge will do all of that. And storm surge is where you have an ex, an, uh, a surge in water, where all the wind, where the wind is pushing all that excess water from the sea, from the coastline, inundating coastal areas. And we know across the world, we have roughly about 70% of the population living in coastal areas, major cities across the world, they are in coastal areas. So if we should have a, a dangerous and extremely category, you know, a category five system moving anywhere along these coastal areas, we know what the causes of that will be. We also know what the effects of that will be on all of those people living in these low lying and flood prone areas, all right? So we do have rip currents coming as a result of tornadoes. We have hurricanes spawning tornadoes in, uh, in some places. Rip currents associated with strong winds, rough seas as a result of that system as it passes, okay? Um, storm surge, this is how when we have, uh, you know, huge amounts of water, as we said before, making its way from the sea, being pushed under the influence of the winds, structural damage to buildings, and of course, this can cause, uh, uh, you know, major, major damage to buildings on the coastal, on the coastal areas and also all the way inland. And that can completely take out your docks, your marinas, your pier, Pier 1 in Montego Bay. All of those areas can be completely uh, decimated with these strong winds and these storm surges moving on shore. Now, let me just back up also a little and just go over what exactly is a low pressure system. Now we have a low pressure system, remembering, bearing in mind that this is how they form. When we have converging winds and rising warm air, once we have that rising warm air, we're going to have that warm air producing clouds, showers, thunderstorms, cumulonimbus clouds. And as the warm air rises, 
we do have this area of vacuum that's created uh, where that warm air is rising from. So high pressure will fill that gap and we have a continuous inflow, outflow of warm air and also of cold air. That is what drives our big engine called a hurricane. All right, and remember that hurricane has enough energy in it to drive the planet for years, roughly about 10,000 nuclear bombs, all right? So that is all for today for your CSEC geography, natural hazards and disasters. And of course, we focus on hurricanes and you'll remember these are hydro hydrogeologic, we have hydrometeorological and we have biological hazards like the coronavirus. So we hope you grasped most or all of what we discussed today. Of course, you can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN at 4 p.m. and in Schools Not Out Highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. right here on TVJ. It will also be on Video On Demand on One Spot Media. Until next time, I'm Marlon Virtue. Have a great day and pleasant viewing. Stay safe. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. for COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during and after you prepare